Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning to God's house, especially those who are here physically and those who are tuned in electronically. Today is a special day. We're going to celebrate the baptism of, or the celebration of baptism for Franklin and his family and all those who are here to witness that. We wish you God's blessing and all of that. Uh, one announcement I'd like to make is that next Sunday, Operation Christmas Child, the uh, little shoe boxes that were handed out are due to be brought in. And uh, that's just as a reminder. Uh, Bernice would like to make a couple of announcements as well. Next week Sunday is Mission Sunday here at Covenant and we were going, we're going to be introduced to yet another way that God's calling us to ministry through the uh, resonant global mi uh, mission our special guests next week will be Anthony and Barbara Pennings, who walk alongside the indigenous community on Manitoulin Island. They carry the message there of Jesus and his love in personal and in practical ways. I invite you to read more about the Pennings in the brochures as they're found on the back table. Please pick one up and take it home with you. Anthony is going to be preaching God's word to us next Sunday, and then he and Barbara uh, will share their work with us as we begin our new partnership with them. Our offering next Sunday will also be for Resonant Global Mission for Anthony and Barbara Pennings. And I invite you all this week to pray about um, how we can partner with them as Covenant Church and support them. Um, God has chosen us to support them through offering encouragement, lifting them up in prayer, and providing financial support. And guess what? We get to do all of that next week, beginning next week. Praise God for that. Now we're going to open up our worship in prayer. Could you rise in body and spirit as we open with prayer from Psalm 84? How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts, we long to be where you are, to stand in your very presence, and to behold you face to face. And so we have come to this place today. We have gathered together to worship you, to offer the praise which belongs to you alone. Bless us as we worship you together. 
And as we open our hearts and our minds to your presence among us, for you alone are God, the one in whom we trust. Amen. and welcome. You'll notice a little bit of ease and restrictions uh, for, for us at the front, for singing, preaching, and for speaking. Uh, the mask restriction has been lifted, so that's one positive sign for us to be encouraged that the end is coming uh, for these, these restrictions. Just uh, patience for us as we wait upon the rest of the restrictions to be lifted. And we certainly, our, our heart, our, we certainly celebrate these restrictions and and the positive uh, signs here in North America for sure, but we certainly, our heart certainly aches for other parts of the world that are still in the, in the throes of this pandemic. And also we think of Veronica's brother Carl who still fights for his life in, in ICU. So it's still a very real thing that we, we struggle with even today. But in the midst of our joys and our sorrows, our God greets us to those who are called, who are beloved in God the Father and kept safe for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. And all God's people say, Amen. You may be seated. It's also wonderful to have Abby in. Little children running around the front again. We haven't had that in a long time. (laughs) 
Brothers and sisters in Christ, the sacrament of baptism reminds and assures us that we share in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and are incorporated into Christ's body, the Holy Church. Baptism proclaims the the faith of the church. The water of baptism is a sign and seal of God's promise to cleanse us from sin, to renew us, and to reconcile all things to himself in Christ. In baptism, God's people are promised the gift of the Holy Spirit as a pledge of this reconciliation. The same Spirit binds us to each other and joins us to Christ's ministry of love and peace and justice. Hear also these words from Holy Scripture. And as we celebrate Commissioning Sunday, this is very fitting, the Great Commission. All of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glor- to the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life, Romans 6. Baptism is a sign and seal of God's promises to his covenant people. In baptism, God promises by grace alone to forgive our sins, to adopt us into the body of Christ, the church, to send the Holy Spirit daily to renew us, and cleanse us, and to ultimately resurrect us to eternal life. The promise is is made visible in the water of baptism. Water cleanses. Water purifies. It refreshes. It sustains. Jesus Christ is the living water. Through baptism, Christ calls us to new obedience to love and trust God completely, to forsake the evil in this world, and to live a new and holy life. Yet when we fall into sin, we must not despair of God's amazing mercy, nor continue in sin, for baptism is the sign and seal of God's eternal covenant of grace with us. Ben and Alex, I'll ask you to stand. Since you have presented Franklin for holy baptism, we ask you before God and his people to reject evil, to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, and to confess your faith of the church. Do you renounce sin and the power of evil in your life and in the world? Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Beautiful. Do you believe that your children, though sinful by nature, are received by God in Christ as members of his covenant and therefore ought to be baptized? And do you promise in reliance of the Holy Spirit and with the help of this Christian community to do all in your power to instruct Clark and Abigail and Franklin in the Christian faith and to lead them by your example into the life of Christian discipleship? What is your answer? Now, Covenant Church family, do you promise to love and to encourage and to support Franklin by teaching him the gospel of God's love, by being an example of Christian faith and character, and by giving the strong support of God's family in fellowship and in prayer and in service? What is your answer? We do, God helping us. Now, brothers and sisters, I'll ask you to stand as we together sing the words of the creed. Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three. 
Ben and Alex, you can come up with the kids. Franklin's wide awake. The water's nice and warm. I felt it. Hey, Franklin. Hi, Abby. How are you? Hey, Clark. Pretty cool, hey? Before the baptism, we're going to have a prayer together. Dear God, we thank you for this beautiful day and for each day. You have given us the breath of life. We thank you for all your blessings, especially as we gather and celebrate this day, the baptism of Franklin. Look upon him with mercy and grace. Bless Ben and Alex, Clark and Abigail. Give them the gift of love and wisdom and faith. Fill Ben and Alex with your Holy Spirit and shine the light of your presence upon them that they may follow your path and lead their children to know you. And may the peace of God reign in the life of this church, of this family, I should say. The love of God surround them, the Spirit of God empower them, and the joy of God uphold them through Jesus Christ our Lord and all God's people say. Amen. So, Clark, I have written here, you were baptized July the 9th, 2017. Do you remember that? Yeah. And Abigail, I baptized you on April the 28th, 2019. So every two years, is this the pattern here? (laughs) Grandparents, can we expect two two years from now? No, No pressure. All right, let's baptize this little one. Franklin, Bruce, Tilstra, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. And I'll invite Jenny to come forward for the presentation. Ben and Alex, on behalf of Covenant Church, um, I wish to offer you this children's story Bible. And um, we pray that God will bless you richly as you. Um, praise uh, Mr. Kiss and his name and his love. Thank you.
Let's go to our God in the prayers of the people. Lord, Heavenly Father, may the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Open our eyes to both the beauty and the ugliness in our world, loving God. Open our ears to the cries of our sisters and brothers in every place. Open our hands to do your work in the world. Open our hearts to feel the pain and joy, the discouragement and hope of all who long for freedom and peace and justice. Open us today and every day, we pray. Lord Jesus, in this season of Diwali, this Hindu festival of lights, we are reminded once again that you are the light of life. You are the light of the world. And through your Holy Spirit, help us to shine our lights, pointing others to you, the only way to the Father. Father, this world is filled with darkness and needs your light more than ever. We pray for the more than 650 million living women and girls who, according to UNICEF, were married as children. We are shocked and angry that within the next decade, as many as 110 million more are expected to be married before they turn 18, often married into domestic violence, seeing their schooling halted, risking death during childbirth, and bearing infants who have an increased risk of dying before their first month of life. Lord, have mercy. We pray especially for Chad and the Central African Republic and Niger, who lead the world in these human rights violations. We pray for the G20 leaders who met this past week in Rome, and for the ongoing UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, Help all of these countries understand that your kingdom demands generosity and good stewardship of all of the earth's resources. Heavenly Father, in our church family, we lift up our joys and concerns. We again are overjoyed with the baptism of Franklin. And again, that wonderful reminder that before we love, you have loved us. You have shown us your mercy and your grace, and you are a God who desires to enter covenant with your people. We lift up Veronica's brother, Carl. Lord God, we ask for your mercy. We ask that you would hear the prayers of your people. Please restore this brother to health and to his family. We pray that you continue the the healing process for Ryan. We thank you so much for the progress, and we long for full restoration and for his return home again. Oh, what a day that will be. We continue to pray for Ed Hedinga, who recovers at home. Lord, we ask that you would sustain him in his ongoing health struggles. We remember Bill and Kobe and their journey, asking you for your wisdom and your strength. Lord, we pray for Eleanor Treemstra. Lord, and all those who deal with health concerns. Lord God, for for all of our joys and our struggles, we, we lift them up to you and to your throne, seeking your encouragement to be strong and courageous, to not be afraid, for you promise to be with us everywhere we go. If you are for us, O God, who or what can be against us? Now, Lord, as we open up your holy word, prepare our hearts to hear it and to obey your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people say, Amen.
Our Bible reading today is from Joshua, the first chapter. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aide, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This is the word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, these next few examples epitomize the saying, you've got big shoes to fill. Jay Leno taking over for the 30-year reigning king of light night, Johnny Carson. Or Drew Carey taking over for the 35-year icon of The Price is Right, Bob Barker. In the U.S. political scene, it couldn't have been easy for Lyndon B. Johnson following JFK. Or for President Harry Truman assuming the presidency from a man who held that role far longer than any in history. The day after his new commission, President Truman reportedly told a group of journalists, Boys, if you pray, pray for me now. I don't know if you fellows ever had a load of hay fall on you, but when they told me yesterday what had happened, I felt like the moon, the stars, and all the planets had fallen on me. Brothers and sisters, I wonder if that is how Joshua felt after he learned that he would be the one succeeding one of the greatest leaders of all time, the mighty mediator Moses. God's best friend. Do you remember who buried Moses when he died? It wasn't Joshua, Moses' aide. It was God. God buried Moses himself. God who got his hands dirty at creation when he planted a garden now gets his hands dirty burying his good friend Moses. Now imagine Joshua hearing these biographical words about Moses at the very end of the book of Deuteronomy. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all these, those signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt to Pharaoh and all his officials and the whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did. 
in the sight of all Israel. So Joshua, now it's your turn. You've got some mighty large sandals to fill. Oh, and let's not forget the context of Joshua's commissioning in chapter 1. Moses has been the great shepherd leading his people around the desert for 40 years. Joshua has now been commissioned to take the promised land on the other side of the Jordan, which just so happens to be in flood stage right now. No biggie, Joshua, get going. Cross through that flooded river and take the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. Now, the promised land is not a land filled only with giant produce. It is filled with giant people who are well prepared to fight, according to Numbers 13. One historian describes it from personal observation. Joshua knew that the Canaanites and others were vigorous people who lived in strongly fortified cities. Frequent battles kept their warriors in trim fighting condition. And for the most part, the land was mountainous, a fact that would make war maneuvers difficult. Joshua, you are going to need to be more than a shepherd. You will need to be a mighty warrior, a brilliant general, all the while dealing with a people notorious for their whining and prone to rebellion. You will need a whole lot of wisdom and a whole lot of strength and courage. Brothers and sisters, the the narrator of this passage doesn't let us in on how Joshua is feeling at this point. But we do hear the Lord tell him three times with increasing intensity, be strong and courageous. So it's not hard to imagine that Joshua is feeling overwhelmed right now. Perhaps weak and fearful even. Like President Truman, he has the weight of the world on his shoulders. Now, maybe at first we think that we can't relate to President Truman or to Moses or Joshua. We've never had such a burden thrust upon us. But don't we all sometimes feel like the weight of the world is on our shoulders? Don't we sometimes feel weak and fearful? That we can all relate to. Last week we examined the burden we sometimes carry like the character Christian in the novel Pilgrim's Progress. And in that sermon, we were reminded that this burden becomes a lot heavier when we start to worry about every possible worst-case future scenario and all the things that could go wrong because of the particular burden that we carry. And when we go down that road, we often forget the promise of the person who is right there beside us the one who actually does hold the future in his hands, the one who says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. We were encouraged to allow Jesus to lighten our burden by focusing on one day at a time, one step at a time knowing that he will be right there with us, carrying us at our weakest moments. When we do this, the the hope is that the, the burden won't be nearly as heavy and we'll experience some much needed relief, if only temporary, some rest. Remember the words of Jesus in John 10, verse 10? 
I came so that they may have life and have it to the full. Now that full life isn't only the result of our laying unnecessary burdens down at the foot of the cross, at the feet of Jesus. This abundant life comes when we are now able to take on a different burden. It's a commissioning. And it's the same one that Joshua was called to take on. I know that sounds strange, but bear with me. Let's look at Joshua's commissioning first. Way back before Joshua, at the time of Abraham, before Israel was even a nation, before Abram had any children at all, the Lord promised that Abraham's children would become a great nation and that they would inherit the land of Canaan. For well over 400 years, God's people have been waiting. Joshua's call is to lead God's people into this long-awaited fulfillment. And after driving out most of the people of Canaan and their wicked practices with them, the Lord could dwell with his covenant people. And this particular land would be like a new Genesis, a new garden, a new creation. It would be a picture of of where it's all headed. A kingdom where everyone knows God, worships God, loves God, and is loved by God. Fast forwarding to the end of the book of Joshua, we read this. So Joshua took the entire land just as the Lord had directed Moses and he gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to their tribal divisions. Then the land had rest from war. Rest. Sabbath rest. Could this be the beginning of the new heavens and new earth? Was this the kingdom of God that Israel had been waiting for? After all, Joshua's name means the Lord gives victory. The Lord saves. Well, sadly, brothers and sisters, we know the rest of the story. You might have noticed that I said Joshua drove out most of the Canaanites. Not all of them. But instead of the people of Israel being witnesses to them, they adopted the evil practices of the remaining Canaanites, and they were eventually expelled from the land and from God's holy presence. Israel and the world would need a leader greater than Moses, greater than Joshua. Enter Jesus, whose name means the same as Joshua. The Lord gives victory. The Lord saves. But would Jesus do any better than Joshua? Would Jesus' victory be longer lasting, eternal even? Jesus started off with humble beginnings. He and his family then found themselves political refugees in Egypt. And from that ancient place of Israel's bondage, God called Jesus, his son, out of Egypt. His son, our mediator. God called his son to take a step into the river Jordan to be baptized like some foreign seeker. Jesus, we remember, stood in line with the, rest of the, with the rest of those fellow human beings waiting to be baptized by John the Baptist. It was in the same river that Joshua crossed where Jesus 
was baptized. Now, a common misunderstanding, brothers and sisters, that baptism is not the baptism that we witness today. This baptism of John was a baptism of repentance. It was usually performed on Gentiles or foreigners who wanted to be included in the Jewish faith. So here, even though Jesus didn't need, any, didn't need to repent of anything, he, on behalf of his fellow Jews and Gentiles, says... I will lead the way. I will cross the Jordan and retake not only the promised land, but all land, all of creation. And I will lead you into the presence of God himself, a glorious and forever presence. That, brothers and sisters, was and is the greatest blessing that God can ever give. Sabbath Rest, eternal rest in the presence of God. But first, Jesus would have to do what Adam and what Moses and what Joshua and all of his covenant people failed to do. After his baptism, the Spirit sent Jesus out into that wilderness, that place of death, for 40 days to be tempted by Satan. And this 40 days reminds us of the 40 years of Israel's wilderness wanderings. But Jesus overcame every single last temptation the devil threw at him. So after proving that Jesus was faithful and was the true Israelite, he resolutely set out toward Jerusalem to set up his kingdom, to retake the land, not only from Roman oppressors. Jesus was there to take back the land from his sinful covenant people too. Jesus was there to set up a new kingdom that would include all of creation. And yes, he would take it through violence and judgment just as Joshua took the land by the sword. But this time, the violence and the judgment would not be done to the inhabitants of Canaan. It would be done to Jesus himself. Jesus was willingly cut down. Remember our covenant theology from a while back where God told Abraham to cut up those animals into pieces and God walked straight through. This cutting of a covenant was God was saying, in essence, if either one of us doesn't feel, fulfill the terms of all the covenants, I will allow myself to be cut to pieces. And Jesus did that on the cross. He did it to take care of our side of the covenant, which we failed to keep over and over again. And that cross, brothers and sisters, is the stake in the ground. It's God's claiming that Jesus has won the victory over sin and guilt and death and hell. It is finished, says Jesus. I have won the victory. Do you know how we know for sure that Jesus has won the victory. Because in three days, his lifeless body was raised up again, just as prophesied. And Jesus received a glorious new resurrection body. The very first physical and tangible fruit of the new and everlasting kingdom 
and creation. And as we heard in the words of the baptismal formula, since Jesus died and was buried, we too will raise up again with a new body. All who, who are united in faith will get the same glorious resurrection body. But for now, brothers and sisters, Jesus calls us to take up our own cross and to follow him. We are called to go to the ends of the earth, staking claims all over the place, not through the power of the sword, but through the power of the cross. The power of humble, selfless, Christ-like service. The power of love. It's a putting others first kind of love. So yes, we like Joshua have a very high calling. This earth is breaking down, we know that. But we are called to plant seeds everywhere. Seeds that will bring forth something new and beautiful when this whole falling apart earth is refined in fire. By our lives, we drive signposts into the ground that say, the kingdom of God is coming. The kingdom of God is here. This way to the new creation. Can't you see it? Can't you see it in the way we treat our spouses? Can't you see it in the way we love our children? Can't you see it in church communities who promise to support parents in teaching their children to know and love the Lord? Can you tell by the way Christians look out for the hurting, the homeless, the helpless, and the hopeless? Can you see it even in how we love our enemies? Even in our trials, we are still full of hope. And when the world sees this, they will ask, what do they know? we don't know. What do they have that we don't have? Brothers and sisters, the world needs to know what we know. The world needs to hear the same encouraging message that Joshua heard and that we are hearing again today in our weakness and our fear. Our great God who doesn't only call us to do great things, he always equips us. If he commands, he always equips. He equips us for the task. And even more importantly, he always gives timely encouragement when we need it most. He does it through his word and through God's people. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. People of God, whenever you are afraid, whenever you feel discouraged, whenever you feel the weight of the world on your shoulders, take courage. Take courage, for Jesus has overcome the world. He's been there, done that. He will not only show us the way, he will give us the wisdom and the courage and the strength we need each and every day, every single step of the way. And all God's people say, Lord God and Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your timely encouragement once again. 
Lord, this pandemic has left us feeling disoriented, confused, sometimes fearful. But Lord, no matter what is going on in our lives, whether it's a global pandemic or a personal trial, you through your word and through your people, through your spirit, remind us once again that you were right there with us. You gave Joshua timely words and you give us timely words. We're so thankful for your love and for your encouragement. We need your wisdom, we need your strength, and we need your courage to carry out that great call to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that you have commanded, Lord Jesus. But then that wonderful promise that echoes the words of Joshua 1, for you, Lord Jesus, will be with us to the very end of the age. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have our commissioning service. I don't think we had one last year, maybe not even the year before. I'm not sure when the last one we had because of this pandemic. But we're hopeful of better times ahead. Where are you going to get the litany? Thanks. Just like Joshua, God calls and commissions us to be disciples, to disciple our children, and he equips us to do it. There are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. The Spirit's gifts are here to stay in rich variety, fitting responses to timely needs. We thankfully see each other as gifted members of the fellowship which delights in the creative work of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives more than enough to each believer for God's praise and our neighbor's welfare. Congregation of our Lord Jesus Christ, Paul has taught us in Ephesians 4 that it was Jesus who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. In order that every person following Jesus Christ may attain these goals, our church promotes a vital program of education and discipleship. We thank God that he has gifted so many among us and made them willing to serve as teachers and leaders as they help us grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, we promise them our prayers and support. The Bible says not many of you should presume to be teachers because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. In these words, we are reminded of the great responsibility which is ours in the teaching ministry of the church. Yet it is also a joyful task because it is one way in which our God leads his people into conformity to the likeness of Jesus Christ. And I just want to ask that all those, it was a little bit different, so I'm going to ask all those that were involved even during the pandemic and the discipling of our children, from Sunday school up to our high school age and beyond, if you could stand, and also those that are, are going forward in, in the programs whether that be program planning or building, or whether that be volunteering or leading, 
Just ask all of you to stand now. To thank you for your faithful service in the past and to encourage you for your service into the future, we now ask. You have pointed our children to Jesus Christ in the past, and we thank you for that. For any future work you may have discipling our children, do you promise to continue to point our children to Jesus Christ and to teach the truths of God's revelation in the Bible? Do you promise to teach and live in such a way that you are an example to those who learn? Do you promise that you will pray for your students and encourage them to grow in faith and godliness? And do you promise to live in close fellowship with the Lord and rely on the Holy Spirit to help you in this wonderful work? We are thankful for the support of the congregation and ask for the cooperation of all as we carry out our task. May God richly bless you as you carry out the commission you have just made. Our Lord said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So we charge all as disciples of Jesus Christ to faithfully attend the classes and meetings offered for your, for your instruction, to highly honor your teachers and leaders as sent by God for your formation, and to study your material diligently so that you may learn more about God's great salvation in Jesus Christ as his will for your lives. May you desire to be disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you be thankful to God for your leaders. And may you build the kingdom of God while you are being, trans or being formed in the image of God. May we all find such joy and fulfillment in our learning and growing that we may become more and more the joyful and obedient servants of our Lord Jesus Christ to the glory of God our Father. All God's people say, Amen. You be seated. I'd like to invite uh, all those forward for the PowerPoint presentation. Brothers and sisters of Covenant Church, last year, through some sermons, we were introduced to the building blocks of faith. These building blocks were developed by our denomination's Faith Formations Ministry Team, and we believe that we can leverage these building blocks to help us navigate through these strange times with the hope that we will be able to create a sustainable ecosystem or church culture that is more sustainable in the long run and results in deeper relationships and even stronger faith within our families, church community, and the community outside our walls that we are called to serve. Now these building blocks of faith are not some new shiny program or curriculum. The building blocks of faith describe four spiritual needs everyone has that are met in Christ. Regardless of their situation, for anyone in our church to grow in faith, they must feel that four important things are true for them. Number one, I belong. I belong to Jesus and thus to the, his body, the church. Number two, I know and understand. I know and understand the story of God's faithfulness of which I am a part. Number three, I have hope. I have confidence through Christ in all of God's promises. God is making all things new, and he is using us to accomplish that. And number four, I am called and equipped. I am called to work in God's kingdom, and I am equipped to do that work. Addressing all of these needs helps faith to flourish in all people of all ages, and we hope this will become a framework for all of our congregation to follow. Before the pandemic started, we were beginning to experience challenges when it came to running our faith formation programs like Sunday School, GEMS, Cadets, and Youth Group. We even experienced 
some of these challenges for our adult discipleship initiatives, such as our corporate Bible study. Various challenges we were experiencing included lack of leaders and declining enrollment. A few weeks back, a group of program leaders from different parts of the church got together with a fairly blank agenda, wondering how and when we could safely reopen and kickstart some of our youth activities. The conversation quickly centered around the faith formation of our children and the promises we made at each of their baptisms. Promises to receive them in love, pray for them, instruct them in their faith, and encourage and sustain them in the fellowship of believers. Again, how can we do this when not all of our children, leaders, and volunteers are present? In the past, we were able to do those baptismal promises through well-established programs like Sunday School, GEMS, Cadets, our youth group, and Catechism Instruction. The torch was passed down from one generation to the next, and it was a beautiful thing. We celebrate those times and those programs for, for such a time as that and then. I say it like that because, like Esther, we find ourselves in such a time as this, the ever-changing here and now. We find ourselves in a strange new world, still struggling through this worldwide pandemic and all its divisions. Thankfully, it looks like we, in North America at least, are finding ourselves through the darkest part of the valley and hopefully ascending into some kind of new normal. So what does this all mean to the faith formations of your children and youth in particular? It means that Sunday School Cadets, GEMS, and Youth Group will be similar and different than before. Now, we don't know how any program will work out or who will be able to participate in person. So after much discussion, we decided, through the leading of the Holy Spirit, to attempt something a little bit new. Not brand new, but new. We're going to try some changes for this season and the next, and then with the help of parents and program leaders and council, see if these changes have been a work of the Spirit or if we want to go back to previous programs or try something different. The Sunday School program started in, up in the beginning of October. Currently, all of our children, who are the ages of 3 to 11, are meeting in one large location because of the pandemic and safety requirements. We are using the Dwell Flex curriculum, which is designed for a broad age range of children. The Sunday School teachers are ensuring that the building blocks of faith are utilized within the material we are teaching the children. We currently have five teachers who are teaching on a rotating basis. If you are a high school student and you are looking for some community hours, please consider volunteering to help us on a Sunday morning. Uh, the biggest challenge will be the introduction of a new group called Living Stones. This group, which is made up of children in grades four to eight, will, will be built on a solid foundation of gems and cadets, but children will be together instead of apart. Using the building blocks of faith as a guide, we will seek to develop seasonal programming that will teach both boys and girls together life skills through mentorship, devotion, hands-on learning, and in other creative ways that will build and sustain faith in our children. Plans are being set in place to start the Living Stones group on November 18th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. here at the church. Any children who are in grades four to eight are welcome to attend. We are kicking off with a fun night of activities and games that will adhere to the COVID guidelines. The Living Stones will greet, sorry, the Living Stones group will meet every other Thursday night. So starting November 18th, December 2nd, and the 16th, then resume in January after Christmas break. We are starting by looking at the first building block of faith, I belong, focusing on belonging to Jesus and our church community. Putting an emphasis on belonging is critical coming out of this pandemic. We are very much looking forward to starting this new program at Covenant, and we would appreciate your prayers for a successful implementation of it and the instructions of our children in their faith formation. Our youth group will be starting up again on Thursday, November 11th. It will look a little different this year, but we are looking forward to incorporating the building blocks of faith. The first set of meetings for the year will take place every Thursday night in a six-week block. We hope to see any youth in grades 9 through 12 come out for fun, worship, and fellowship. We are also planning on using the church website for updates and announcements pertaining to youth group.
Youth group will be running on a seasonal or blocked base programming where we will have a six week time frame and then take a few weeks break before resuming again. Living Stones will be meeting on a bi-weekly basis without taking a break in between programming. This type of programming will helpfully allow more volunteers and children to take part throughout the year. Some of our children or volunteers may be able to attend one or two seasons throughout the year, but not all of them. Having this flexibility will allow our children to sense that they still belong at Covenant and they will be warmly embraced whenever they are able to attend. We will also be calling on members of the congregation to help out for different seasons or themes, or to come as special guests, showing the children how work and faith intersect and how God has been present in all of life. In all of this programming, we will seek to provide resources and tools for families and to find ways to involve all of our generations of believers, bringing us closer together as we grow in faith together. We certainly cover your prayers in all of this, and need your help if this is going to produce fruit. Just like prior to COVID, Sunday School and our other children and youth programs could not run without the help of our many wonderful volunteers. Please consider in prayerful thought if you feel a calling to help with any of the new children and youth programs that we are running here at Covenant. We would like you to leave you, or sorry, we would like to leave you with these words of encouragement from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. So continue encouraging each other and building each other up just like you are doing already. Could you stand with us in body and spirit as we sing our song of commissioning? It's wonderful to have a little fuller church, and you can hear, hear the praises being lifted up. That's such an encouragement to, to all of us as we worship together. Uh, one of the principles that uh, we live by in this kingdom is to offer our first fruits, our first and our best to God, and of course that includes our financial uh, blessings. We had a council meeting recently. We were talking about budgeting for the new year and reflecting on uh, how God has blessed us in this church family and how the giving is still strong. 
Certainly thank you for your faithful giving and just want to encourage this message will be for members, not for guests that are, are here or vi visiting with us, but for any members that have fallen out of the pattern of giving, I just want to encourage you uh, to pick that up again. It's a wonderful way to uh, make sure that all of our promises are kept and all these ministries that we have in our church can keep going. So if, those are, if you've kind of fallen out of that pattern because of COVID, please uh, pick that up again. We encourage you to do so. Our offerings this morning are for Indwell and uh, for our church ministries and, and our budget. So let's pray for that. Lord God and Father, we are so thankful that as a church family, you have protected us uh, financially, economically from, from this pandemic, Lord. I know there has been trials for, for some, and, but you have sustained us through this, Lord, quite nicely, and, and we recognize that, and we give you praise. But we also recognize that with this blessing comes the uh, opportunity and privilege to share that with our community and our, and our world so we just give you thanks that we can give to organizations like Indwell and, and also to our church ministries where we can still um, present your gospel through, through Sunday worship and through all the programs that we have throughout the week. Lord, what a privilege that is. I just pray that you would help us to be cheerful givers and to give of our first fruits, fruits to you. I pray it in your precious name. Amen. you rise with us in body and spirit as we sing our closing song. After the conclusion of the service, I've asked Ben and Alex who are willing to be just outside the doors there so we can offer our congratulations to them. 
receive the commissioning, the commission and the blessing. Go forth into the world trusting with your hearts the wisdom God bestows upon all who seek to follow God's will. When called to lead, do so with humility and confidence in God. Be in this world a sign of Jesus' presence. Share compassion with all whom you encounter. Live wisely in God's name and glorify God in all you do. And may the grace, mercy, and wisdom of God be our support, guidance, strength from this day forward and forevermore. And all God's people say, amen. Brothers and sisters, as we don't have a Remembrance Day service, and that falls the, this week, we're going to sing O Canada together, and then we're going to have a minute of silence to remember lives lost, and also for those who have served both in the past and the present to protect our freedoms. <laughs>